today's tale finds us here, Backton Woods, an ancient woodland dating back to Anglo-Saxon times, but could easily date from much earlier. On a beautiful, bright, sunlit day, it's the perfect place to come to for a relaxing stroll through the trees. But remember, trees can harbour dark secrets. And one place here has a very grim story to tell. Welcome to Gibbet Peace and the start of our tale. The year is 1797, and please meet the subject of this particular story. William Suffolk is 46 years old, a local man born and bred in Swayfield, just a few miles away. He lived there on a small holding with his wife, four children, and his widowed father. Now next door to the Suffolk family, lives one Mary Beck and her brother. Younger than Will and rather attractive, she catches his eye and they start a secret affair. Their illicit relationship stays hidden until Mary falls pregnant and when she can no longer hide this fact, they run away to the grass counties and have the child in secret. Now here is where our tale takes a sinister twist. Neither Mary or Will want the poor child, so together they murder the baby and they hide the body. They eventually return to their former homes in Swayfield. It's not recorded what tall tales they told to cover up their liaison, but Will Suffolk returned to his wife and children and life resumed just as before. Living so close to each other, it was not long before things began to happen again and they could not resist a final fling together. After being chastised by her brother, Mary decided enough was enough and she wanted no more of the affair. The next day, the 3rd of February, Mary's brother, disapproving of Suffolk's continued attentions to Mary, asked him to cease the visits. A violent quarrel followed, during which Suffolk declared that the brother would see a great altercation by nightfall. Later that day, Will Suffolk caught up with Mary as she returned home from selling three bushels of wheat at market. Suffolk declared that the profits were his, but Mary refused to hand over the money, saying that it belonged to her brother. The argument went back and forth, and then Suffolk made advances towards Mary, and she quickly rebuffed him. He demanded to know why she had yielded to him the night before, but would not do so now. Mary replied that it was a mistake, and she wanted no more of the affair, and she never wanted to see him again. This proved to be too much for Will Suffolk, and he flew into a violent rage, raising the cudgel he had in his hand, and he struck Mary a mighty blow, which knocked her to the floor. Just for good measure, Will struck her again. Three more blows rained down as poor Mary lay helplessly on the ground. Suffolk, realising what he'd done, then dragged her lifeless body across the cart track and laying her head in one of the wheel ruts, he then stamped it into a bloody pulp. In a somewhat crude attempt to hide the crime and make it seem that a tragic accident had occurred. Will Suffolk began to make his way back home
Passing groups of locals, they spotted the blood splattered all over his body and they challenged him to explain as to why he appeared so. Still in a rage, Suffolk shouted replies made no sense. In the meantime, a cry arose. She's over there! The battered body of poor Mary had been found. The locals, upon hearing of this commotion, they kept hold of Will Suffolk, realising that he must have somehow been involved. The parish constable was summoned and Will Suffolk found himself arrested. William Suffolk was questioned by the local justice and he confessed to the murder of Mary and of the baby. To make matters worse, he told the justice that had he not been detained, there would have been two more murders done, that of his wife and Mary Beck's brother. William Suffolk went on trial for murder at the local assizes. He was found guilty and he was sentenced to hang. On the 21st of March, a large crowd gathered around Castle Hill in Norwich. William Suffolk was led out and the death sentence was duly carried out. He became somewhat of a local celebrity. His whole sordid tale recorded on broadsheets and sold for a penny. Ballads were sung and his deeds even got mentioned in local church sermons as a warning to others of what illicit passions could drive a person to do. Being hung was not the end for poor William Suffolk. His body was cut down, parboiled and coated in tar. Taken to near the scene of his crime, the body was placed in a gibbet and left to hang as a grim warning to others. The remains stayed there swinging in the breeze and many people came to see this notorious criminal. Some of them even removed body parts for souvenirs. Finally in June in 1803, six years after it was left there, the unsightly and somewhat grisly remains were taken down and buried nearby without ceremony or a grave marker. Back to the modern day and the site has become a neary place. The still air, sometimes disturbed by low and tragic moans and the rusty screech of the gibbet as it swings from side to side. Some walkers have experienced a strange and uneasy feeling here in these woods and dog walkers have found that their dogs begin to act very strangely and they refuse to enter parts of these woods. Let's leave you with one last thing. Now in the 1980s, some children were playing near to Gibbet Peace. They spotted what seemed to be a moss covered skeleton lying in the grass. They ran back and persuaded their parents to come and see. And upon returning to the site, they found that the skeleton had completely disappeared. Now, could this be William Suffolk's restless spirit showing them where his remains could be found? So ends our tale. And now there is only one thing left for us to do. Well, like Juliet said in the last part of the video, there is only one thing we can do. That's to come down here and investigate. And it's a whole different place when you come down here in the dark. Well, tonight there's me, the skeptic, and I'm with two psychics, which is a very strange combination. And we're wandering down 
through Backton Woods, see what we can find. I'll just peer across and say hello to the ladies. So here we are, we've got Juliet and we've got Tracy and they're the two psychics from out there. And tonight it's something a little bit different. There's just me, the skeptic with my camera and the two psychics to see what they pick up. Unfortunately though, Juliet, over to you. Okay, well unfortunately guys, as you know, or fortunately, because it was quite interesting, I was doing the history of what happened here earlier. So, you know, psychically, I'm really going to have to stand down on this one because, you know, we have to be fair, um, we have to be thorough and, you know, it wouldn't be the fair thing to do for me to start tuning in based on what I know. It just wouldn't be accurate. So really tonight, psychically, it's all about Trace. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know we were going to put you on the spot, <laughs> did you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I know absolutely nothing. I didn't even know the guys were here this afternoon or this morning whenever it was um, so it's all up to me I think <laughs> it so is all up to you There's it's all up to me we've we've had some interesting things happen we had some interesting stuff happen while we were filming um, we're going to go back to the location shortly um, to revisit it in the dark and as Nigel said it's a very different place in the dark um, so watch this space and let's see what we pick up tonight <laughs> We stopped just for a moment because uh, Juliet saw something strange in the path behind us. I'll spin the camera around you can get a good idea of what you can't see down here. footsteps. I'm getting whispering. Crikey. Moth just landed on me, that wasn't funny. <laughs> there is a little crickety thing making a yeah. noise down here. down here. There's two of them, one there and one over there. Why has it suddenly got really light on that path? There's someone up there. Yeah. yeah it's there's people up there. up there. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll roll that out. So yep. Other people coming, which is an interesting experience. After our run in with the last of the midnight dog walkers, we continue walking down the path until something makes our two psychics stop dead in their tracks. Okay, I just heard something. Yeah, I did. I just heard a woman say, come on. Yeah, we were there. Um, we've come off the beaten track a bit. It's a place we went to earlier on we were filming that uh, Juliet felt drawn to and we managed to find it again in the dark. Uh, we've just come in here and they've both heard a voice, a lady's voice, asking them to come. We're going to go and have a look. You've seen a light down there. Yeah. Now tell me where you heard come. Just point to that area where you heard it. Okay, now interestingly, Tracy, mm -hmm. um, just to inform you, that where you were pointing was what I saw a figure of a person dressed in white mm -hmm. during the daylight earlier today. I couldn't tell whether it was male or female but I can hear a plane going overhead, but it was definitely a figure. And if that is where the cum came from, yeah. Hello everybody. I just thought I'd let you know that um, whilst we've just been doing some filming, I have just seen a person um, standing behind a bush and I've just had a look and there's absolutely nothing there, which is really, really strange. Anyway, I'll leave that up to you. I heard something too, but obviously everything I say, I, I can't really say anything. Um, well, it kind of went at the same time, little and over there. So it's yeah. Slightly before. Now, unfortunately, there are still people here, so we're still getting background noises from a small family behind us. Um, but uh, that. He sort of went, oh, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. And it was in that direction. Yeah. So perhaps we should have head over closer and see what we get over in that vicinity. Perhaps go over and do a bit of calling out there. 
Yeah. Then I'll, I'll set the voice recorder up. Yeah, we could try a spirit box as well. Let's give it a go. Okay. <laughs> okay, up, no. straight in front of me, what I'm seeing right now, peeps, is I'm seeing like a white light straight directly in front of me. I'll just turn the camera that way. And it's flickering right in front of me, but I have no idea. That's the baby. It's really? the children. That's the children, yeah. But I have no it idea. Makes it quite difficult for us. Can you um, put the camera, Nigel, directly in front of me where... Where you're looking. Where I'm looking to see if you can capture anything I at all. No see. Oh, go on Tracy, sorry. Oh, that's all I was going to say, I can see a light as well, but I'm not sure if it's... But I'm it seems sure to be either. coming closer. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's light coming... No, it can't be, because it's coming closer. Yeah. And that's not a bright, bright light, it's like a no. dull, greyish light, but it seems to be kind of moving, but coming in. You said something made you stop, Tracy. Yeah, something wouldn't let me go, it's telling me not to go yet. Okay. I'm getting cold and it's growing up my back. I've got a feeling there's something standing behind me. However, it's, I was getting colder. It's, something's definitely behind me. I have to say, Nigel, yeah, I am getting something quite unpleasant. Would you like to move out of here? Whatever this is right now is, is really, yeah. really unpleasant. This is not good energy. Something's really not Trace, good you feel energy. the same? No, uh, I think the thing standing behind me is something protecting me, and that's what's stopping me from going over to there. It's not good energy. So I think as long as we're here, I'm all right. You're going to be okay. Because right, there's something protecting us behind me. Are you getting negative? Like over there, yeah. Okay, we've stopped here again because the girls are really experiencing something very, very strange. Um, Juliet can see something ahead of her uh, and they're sensing some really bad energy in this spot. I don't know. <laughs> it's really, really I just what they say. I'm, get I'm getting two energies. Um, you say the lady's voice say, go away. Go away. We've set our, if you can hear that now, just spin the camera down that way. Trace has set the spirit box off. Mm. Just to see what we get because the, the lady's sensing something here, so it's probably a good idea to do a quick session here while we're here. And um, we've apparently had a voice came go away, is that right? Yeah, the lady's voice is going away. Mm. I think it's good advice myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm scared. She's warning us. Is there anybody out there for us? Can you speak to us through this box, please? Using equipment like the spirit box brings its own set of problems. The human brain is designed to pick out a regular pattern in irregular noises. So it will recognize what seems to be a random sound as a human word or phrase. During this investigation, we got a lot of responses on our spirit box. What I'm going to do is mark the areas where we got the responses I want you to listen very carefully and see whether you hear words or just a set of random noises. Look out for the little image of the spirit box and listen very carefully. Use the white noise manipulator to contact us. Are we safe here? No. We need to leave. Yeah, I'm getting cold. I've... Pardon? Say that again? That sounded like get out. That was a male. That was a male. Okay. Out. You just said out. We, we need to leave. We're going. We need to leave. <laughs> okay, this is not safe. Going. We'll go away. Oh, no, okay, we've come out of the grove that we were in. We're back out onto the main track now. Juliet really does not want to go down. Trace is not too worried. Me Although on it did it. tell us to run, did it not? The spirit box. Out of this bit, yeah. Yeah. Earlier. And I said I can't run. <laughs> what What do you feel down there, Julia? Just give us an idea. I'm getting a real big, strong feeling of foreboding, um, a very, very angry, negative energy. And sorry, I just thought I saw something there. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
I don't, I feel a bit better now, actually. Trace, how are you? I'm fine. I was feeling really... <laughs> when we stood just there... On the cusp, fine. You want to go down there, don't you? I do. <laughs> yeah. We were on the cusp of that, that energy just there, and I yeah. was just like, no way, I no think way. while we're out of that bit, we're all right on this bit. And I've not had anything tell me I can't go down there. Last chance, we're going down there. If you don't want us down there, please tell us. That's a banging again. There's nothing saying anything, so quite happy now. Yeah. Okay. Can you repeat what you said, please? We've come to another stop because I could hear the spirit box making noises and we should sure it said say help me. Either help me or tell me. Yeah. Help. But again, it's another place where the girls get that sense. Scream, something yeah. <laughs> We've just got a scream and a help. How do you want us to help you? Do we need to release you some way? Do you need to pass on? Oh, he said my name. That was a man who said Tracy then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, yes, this is Tracy. What do you want? been to some scary places in my time but this place freaks you out it is so so dark do you need to go to spirit world turn around yeah. Can you just say turn around what you said bugger off <laughs> Can you repeat that, please? Matter. 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 I've always said matter. Help. Yeah. How can we help you? We've got a sense of what we're doing here. Mm. It looks like we've all turned our torches off. It is pitch black. Mm. The only bit of light is up towards the sky. Look at the top of the trees. I'm just going to go up and see. And you can't even see that on the camera. I'm speaking to the lady who needs help. Wrong. Let her come forward. Oh, I'm going cold again. He's blocking her. Mm. He laughed then, did you hear it? Just a <laughs> yeah. To the lady I'm speaking to, can you come forward? Never mind him, barge him out of the way. Can you hear me? He won't let through. To the man who's blocking the lake. That weren't nice. No. He said coffin. <laughs> I know, no, swore. we're not going to. Please let the lady pass. Let her come towards us. Why are you stopping her? Let me get that. Why are you stopping her? Don't go quiet on me. 
He's still here. Mm. Let the lady pass. Let her through. I ain't going to go till you let the lady through. Or you could try telling us your name if you want to talk. Mm. So what's your name? Name please. Can you tell us your name? What are you doing here? Why are you here? I think they moved on. Yeah, gone. I'm not feeling anything now. It's gone light all of a sudden. Mm. Darkness is light. You see light. Yeah. It's because you're listening to us, aren't you? I know you're there. You just oh, took a step back. Yeah. yeah. It's not as dark as it. It's light down there as well. Okay, we wandered a bit further down the path and once again we've stopped because uh, Trace has picked up on something. So what would you get this time, Trace? Uh, I'm picking up a man. I can't see his face. I've got the silhouette type thing. Um, it's, not got, it's not a top hat. It's like a shorter one. A pork pie hat, is it called? A bowler, bowler hat? Or? No, not a bowler. What, a flat cap? No, it's like a... Oh, I know like what half you mean. Size. Yes, I know what you mean. I'm not sure what they're called. And he's got a cloak, but that's not just one cloak. That's the layered cloak, where you've got an extra part over the shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, why well, he's coming through a bit clearer. Under the hat, I'm getting lots and lots of fuzzy, big, thick, white, greyish, white sideburns. sideburns. Mm -hmm. Um got dark clothing on and the uh, thingy trouser things that comes to the knees with like the stocking things and then the black shoes and he's a little bit hunched I think it's hard to say with the cloak I think he's a little bit hunched and he's got a handful of coins or money but he's picking them up and mm. dropping them like that so they're ch -ch 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 -ch. We actually heard a chink, didn't we? Now we did hear a chink, up, yeah, as well. Which is quite so interesting. it's pretty strange. Yeah. And bearing in mind that I'm, I am picking things up, but I'm trying very, very hard not to tune in yeah. because of, um, you know, me earlier doing what I did. <laughs> okay, once again, we walked a little bit further. We've stopped and we've broken out some of our equipment. We've got a Mel meter, a K2 meter, and uh, the big sort of black thing there is my voice recorder. We'll try and do some calling out sessions here to see if we can pick anything up. That. So, what? Straight in front of us now. Straight in front of me. Hold on. What is that? Straight in front of me, darkness. What is that? It's very dark. What is that? Just dark. Is there something there? There was a dark figure straight in front of me. I saw that. Not far away. Literally, at the most, 10 metres. I've got my back to it. That's really nice, isn't it? <laughs> People are sitting up behind me. Turn round slowly, Nigel. Yeah, I did have a look, but I couldn't. I couldn't wait. It's, oh, it's well. pitch black. There's I nothing can't there now. It's not there. No. No. It's not there. But you just got a sense of something there. No, I just saw it. Yeah. Not a sense. I just saw it. Okay, you've wandered down the path of Avenue Jersey. So this is where this black mass was that you saw. Yeah, yeah? it was just standing here, just here. Probably That's... not much taller than me, to be fair. And that's, I'm not a very tall person, as you well know. Well, that's fairly close. Uh, what would you say, 10 foot away? Yeah. Bloody hell. I'm glad I didn't see it. It was not very pleasant. No. No. Okay. And I'm standing here where it flipping well was. We'll come back here then. I think I shall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Protected. That's true. That was not very nice. And there's nothing mm. there now, nothing mm. at all. Nothing. <laughs> well, here's the fun of being the skeptic out with the psychics. <laughs> They're seeing all sorts of stuff and I can't see a damn thing and they're frightened. They're living daylights out of me. There's things 
coming down the path, I've got my back to it, and then Juliet's going, oh, there's a big black mass, and he's, ah, bloody hell. Anyway, we're gonna do a quick calling out session, um, see if we can pick up any EVPs on the recorder that we've got here, and then we'll, we'll watch our meters. They're both completely flat, and I'm not surprised. There's absolutely nothing out here at all. There would be no sort of power caves or anything to set them off. So if they do work, it's gonna be quite interesting, because there would be something else with an electromagnetic field that will set them off. So calling out, and uh, a bit of meter work, okay. Oh, here we go. It's right behind me, getting cold. Yeah, it just is. heard a sigh. Oof. Got the lady's name of Anne Marie. Okay. Are you Anne Marie? You can make a noise. Or we'll touch one of the party. There's only three of us here. You might feel more comfortable with one of the ladies. It's Tracy and Juliet. Has she gone, Trace? Yeah. Yeah. Where's she gone? Is she, she behind you? I'm not getting her. No. Oh, there was a light, just a little light flickered up there. Okay. It's got the path. In the side. Well, I felt her, I got the name, she moved on, and then there was light up there. So, just up there. Okay. Fell up the path then. Yeah. Still here? Okay, we stopped again. Um, we were following a uh, spirit, we think, with Anne-Marie down the path, and she led Tracy into this sort of side bit. We stopped in there to set the spirit box, didn't pick anything up, and we had the name Caroline. And a few other responses that were not entirely certain what it was saying. Caroline, are you here? That's enough. She said yes, and eat someone said pick up. I heard that's enough. You thought you said yes, and pick up. No, I did. Okay, hang on. Can you repeat what you said, please? <laughs> what did she say? It's not clear, is it? Yeah, that's a garble, isn't it? Caroline, are you there? He's hmm. back. So the bloke again? Yeah. He's back. The blocking yeah. one. Yeah, he's yeah, back. As soon as you said that, at exactly the same time, my thing said no in the man's voice. He's back. Yeah. He's blocking him. Mm. What are you afraid of? Why can't they come forward? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of the women? Are you scared of the women? He's scared, he's scared. No, he's getting upset. Mm. He's not comfortable. He's getting angry. Are we making you angry? What was that? I have no idea, but it's right on my left hand side. What the heck was that? We don't want to make you angry, we just want to know who's here. So if you can tell us your name, please. There's something in the bushes, isn't it, Juliet? I definitely heard something. What is your name, please? Do 
you get a sense of anything there, Juliet? I'm definitely picking up the woman, um, but obviously on this investigation, I have to be fairly quiet. Yeah. Um, but I am getting a female energy, but every time the female energy, whichever one it is, is coming forward, I just saw a flash right behind you, Nigel. Thank you. <laughs> Let me turn around. <laughs> right behind you. I just saw a flash, actually, while I was talking. We're getting garbled messages, a lot of people I, all at I once. I just definitely saw a flash. Something going on behind me. Yeah. He's just blocking you off, Trace. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to move on? We're going to move on, is that acceptable? What was that? A bit so. I don't know. Can you repeat noise, that it? please? I said we're now going, is that acceptable? No, nothing again. Okay. Well, whatever was here is gone. Again. We can let a merry dance through the woods. I think they're just flying with us. Mm. We walked down the path of fairway. Um, we had a few sort of spirits. Well, the girls had a few spirits leading them on because I really don't sense a thing. We've now turned around and we're going back the other way to see if we can experience the same things on the way back. But um, they think it's like a, a bad atmosphere. There's some kind of bloke, we think, a, a, a male spirit blocking a couple of female spirits who are trying to get through to us. So. I don't know. We'll wander back the other way and see what just happens. just stopped at like a clear, it's like a bit of a crossroads. Mm. And um, you got a sense of something here as well, didn't you? Yeah, I uh, just got the sense of, just before we came in and Nigel said, I'm about coming into this bit, this clearing, I had a sense of being shot with a musket gun, ball, straight into my stomach. Not in my arm, my head or anywhere, but just poof, straight through there. Um, I could hear the bang in my head as well. I think it was um, unexpected, like somebody jumped out on them and bang, and it just went straight into the stomach. Uh, and that's all I can get on that. I've not got a name. That was a male who was shot. And you can get a sense from this exactly how dark it is here. It's really dark. I've done a few investigations now, old buildings, people's houses, um, ruins, and it doesn't give you the same sense that this place does. Your senses are really on high alert here. This is such a strange environment, you can't really see a thing. Closing down the thing. Mm. Well, here we are, back at the car park. We've only been here a short while, but a short while was long enough for us to realise that these woods are very active indeed. There's all sorts of things in here. Whether or not it's your mind playing tricks on you, I wouldn't like to say. The ladies picked up an awful lot, so uh, let's switch across to them today for a final statement from those two. So here we go, Tracy and Julia. Well, we're here. We're back at the car park, like I said. Back at the like car said. park, yeah. as Nigel yeah. said, and it's been a very creepy evening. Um, you know, most people go out you know, on a Saturday night or even, sorry, a Friday night and they'll go out for a beer or clubbing or whatever. We end up in the woods <laughs> on a Friday night, you know, because we're a little bit crazy. But it's been a very interesting night. We've had sounds, um, we've had sight, we've had things that we've seen. Um, I've seen um, dark masses um, which disappear. Um, you know, you mentioned the old chap with the coins yeah, jingling, yeah. didn't you? You That's had some I mean. ladies, some female names have yes, cropped up I as did. well. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried, which is very difficult for me because, as you know, I'm very trappy. <coughs> I've tried to be very quiet uh, tonight because, obviously, this is Tracy's show. I can't get too involved. Um, but for me, it's been very interesting. Trace, mm -hmm. over to you. Yeah, I'll agree with that. It's very interesting. Uh, Never been here before, although I'm born and brought up in Norfolk. <laughs> I've never been to Backton Woods. Um, <laughs> so that was an experience in itself. Um, it's interesting that I um, stopped at the same place as you did this morning. Mm. Although I, I went in there, I wanted to go in, but uh, well, I was 
picking up not very nice atmosphere and wanted to get out. Uh, and as Juliet mentioned, the chap counting his coins. Oh, we also had the spirit box in that horrible yeah. place as well, didn't we? That yeah. negative area. Yeah, it was picking up... Uh, because we both Some heard, words. we both heard a female, a female say, Come. screaming as well. Yeah, and she said, she said "Come," <laughs> yeah. you know, which was a bit weird. And yeah, it wasn't. Not yeah, there was the negative. Well, he wasn't so much negative, but he wasn't a nice energy. I was, was getting really blocking. negative. He was blocking the woman coming <sighs> through. We yeah. didn't, didn't seem really negative to me. Yeah, he wasn't nice. Don't get me wrong, he wasn't nice, but. No, I was I was a little bit concerned as to what he felt he could do. I mean, that was more what I was getting, the energy I was picking right. up. But I think there was also the female energy, which was she was a, a good bit energy. More in dis desperation, needing help, and he weren't letting it. I think there's something here. Hmm. I think particularly in that place where we both headed to, hmm. um, that was really uncomfortable. I think there is something there that is waiting to be discovered um i think the spirit lady wants it discovered i think the spirit man does not want it to be discovered and i think mm. every time she tried to come through he was blocking and i think there is a genuine reason for that i think he does not want some information to come out that's what mm. i'm picking up whether i'm right that i don't know but that you know that's what i was getting so there's definitely mm. something in that area that has not been found yet. Yeah. And it was also um, very interesting, um, you know, I think Nigel mentioned, I don't know if he mentioned to you or not, um, when we were um, doing our little bit in that horrible area that we mm. both didn't like, um, all of our equipment, the batteries just went completely flat. Everything mm. went completely, did Nigel mention that to you? I think you told us when we were going in there. Can't remember. That was in that exactly yeah. same area. Exactly yeah. the same exactly area. Same area. Yeah, same and that area. was during the day. Whatever yeah. it was, yeah. just took the energy. To the batteries. Yes. Yeah, so. uh, and coming back, because uh, that was my first time here, and in pitch black as well, coming back, I actually s said we needed to stop because I felt uneasy mm. and when we looked to the side that was that exact same area yet again <laughs> yeah um but I'm not sure if I'd want to go in there again <laughs> oh god I think yeah. I'd rather be in the pub <laughs> yeah. and that is exactly where we're heading now yes yes <laughs> absolutely I think um, a well deserved, deserved drink. Drink. <laughs> one yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay thanks ladies yeah, thank no you. worries good night peeps what we thought was just going to be an interesting local story turned into quite a good investigation. We had a few things happen, both during the day and at night. When filming during the day, we had the batteries drained on our radio mics and on the camera itself. These batteries were fully charged when we started that day. Juliet was drawn into a clearing at the side of the track. When we got in there, she had a very uneasy feeling that something quite sinister had happened in there. It was in this same clearing that she saw the figure in white standing behind me. During the nighttime investigation, we had a number of interesting things happen. Both Tracy and Juliet heard a voice calling them to come, the same clearing that we'd had the experiences in during the day. We had a number of good responses when using our spirit box. Both our psychics saw things as well. They saw lights, strange dark shapes and figures moving and they both picked up on a powerful male spirit who seemed to be stopping any of the female spirits from coming through. This investigation revolved more around the psychic members of our team is something a lot different to what we normally do. The results we have are open to interpretation so I'm going to leave it up to you to decide exactly what did we experience that night in Bacton Woods. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our little tale, and thank you for taking the time to join us. Until next time, good night. <laughs>